So news had broke last night that Sky News was saying that Mike Ashley has held talks with House of Fraser, a company which he, he owns roughly about 11%, to give them a £50 million loan to help them through the crisis. Now, as a Newcastle fan, and like you are as a Newcastle fan, you could probably be a bit pissed off about that news, if that is to be true. So if Mike Ashley does hand over 50 million, yet we're in fucking crisis at Newcastle. Yeah, I didn't care what everybody thinks. We are actually in crisis at the minute. You know, the fans are going to go and protest, and we've got banners going run. It's going to turn hostile again. We're not spending any money. Rafa Benitez has to wheel and deal. We're Newcastle United. We're fucking Newcastle United. We should be up there, hanging around the likes of 7th and 8th, the likes of Everton. You know, we were bigger than Spurs at one point, you know, before Mike Ashley come in. And that's no joke, that is reality. Manchester City were a nobody, no disrespect to Manchester City. You are, you are where you are now because you have money being ploughed into your club. And now you're one of the biggest clubs in the world. We want some of that. Mike Ashley, get the fuck out of our club. Now this lot, his baby that he built up, he's happy to buy his, his uh, stake, his company, is happy to go out and buy the likes of Debenhams and House of Fraser. One year ago today, he said, well it wasn't a day, one year ago, he turned around and said in a Sky interview that he will not, and he will not compete against the likes of Chelsea and Manchester City. That's not what we're asking. What we're asking, Mike, is to give Rafa Benitez some money and give us some hope, give us some ambition. He has the interview. If you sort of say to me, well, I'm wealthy, okay, in theory, I'm a whatever billionaire, maybe a multi-billionaire. But in reality, my wealth is in Sports Direct shares that, are the, as I said the other week, are the same as wallpaper. I don't have that cash in the bank. So I don't have that ability to write a cheque for 200 million. I don't have it. It's, it's very simple. It's, it's not there. I would have to sell the Sports Direct shares to fund that. So people outside of football looking in, and the, and the way sometimes it's portrayed is that that those sort of wealth terms are in the bank they're not and i've got to make it crystal clear i am nowhere near wealthy enough in football now to compete with the likes of man city etc not just man city where basically it's a wealthy individual taking on what is equivalent of countries i cannot every penny the club generates he can have but it won't generate enough it's newcastle united it doesn't have a 40 million a year naming stadium rights deal it doesn't so so i don't want the fans to watch this interview and think that's great rafa's getting 150 million in the morning he's not rafa is w with lee charnley's help and lee charnley answers to rafa not the other way around so we're crystal clear rafa makes all the 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 final decisions on players out players in but he has to do it with the money the club had so if he does go out and bail house of fraser out what about Newcastle United? What about us? What about Rafa? What about the players need strengthen? You know, only Cardiff in the Premier League haven't broke, gone, gone past our transfer record when Freddie Shepard was chairman and when we bought Michael Owen in. You know, in today's money, there's absolutely money everywhere being generated from the Premier League and there is money there. There is money there. We're getting sponsorship of Fun in 8. We're still getting money off Musa Sissoko. We're still getting a little bit of money off Wijnaldum. And we've just sold Mitrovic for 22 million. Whether that's going to be partial payments or a full transfer, we know the money is there. We've got this fat bastard who won't go and invest in our club. Now I'm getting a little bit pissed off of it. I've kept it in and I've kept it in. And I'm, I'm just getting frustrated now and it's starting to boil. And, and, and probably there's several thousand of other, other fans before me and yourself who's watching the video get a little bit knocked off with this that Mike Ashley's just laughing at us pointing and laughing he'd be pointing and laughing at this video we've got to target this we've got to seriously seriously target Sports Direct this is his baby and he's even gone that far to pay people under the minimum wage now in an interview with BBC Breakfast he was obviously talking to Dan Walker about he claims that he didn't know that staff were being underpaid and in court he was found a liar have a look at this how much were you aware of what was going on? Because, you know, you've always, you are Mr. Sports Direct. It's your company. It's your baby. You built it. So you, you must have known, surely. You visit that warehouse regularly. You must have known some of the practices that were going on. On, on that point, I'd, you'd be surprised how little I knew what was going on. And I think that's really where the failing was. Um, you would say, well, how, but how do I know what a night shift does from 12 at night till seven in the morning, or eight in the morning. I don't work there on Saturdays and Sundays. You know, th th there's lots of hours in the week that I'm not there. Remember, it's open 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. So, should I have known more? Yes. Was I aware of some of the things going on? Absolutely not. Complete liar. 
absolute liar. Now, Rafa, as I say, hasn't, hasn't signed his contract yet, which is alarming. You know, we're not showing any ambition. It's frustrating because Mike actually owns a lot of money, a lot of, lot of businesses, sorry. I mean, if I wheel some, wheel some of these off, he doesn't own all of them. Some of them has partial ownership in. He owns Newcastle, of course. Sports Direct behind it, that's his baby. More on that in a minute. Debenhams, House of Fraser, Mash Holdings. You've got Cruise USC, which is a part of the Sports Direct behind us. He's bought out French Connection in the past. He's bought out Donny in the past. He's bought out Slazenger, whatever it's called in the past. Fiddle, uh, Game. Goals. Now, if you, if young young lads who are watching this video, if you're a gamer and you play PlayStation 4 or an Xbox and you're going to game to buy your games, you're funding Mike Ashley. You're funding Mike Ashley. Go somewhere else and get it. Now, he's also got interest in Everlast, GGB, which is now defunct. He's got Finish Line and he used to own a partial bit of Rangers as well. Now, obviously, speaking of Rangers, he just had a court appearance which, court, which he won. The court ruling won today that Rangers owe him half a million over the, the, spur, over the shirt carry-on. Rangers fans are feeling a little bit knocked off about this. This is nothing Rangers fans compared to what we have to go through. We've had 11 fucking years of this shite. 11 fucking years, man. Kevin Keegan come out and said a few years ago on ESPN that you don't trust these men. You don't trust them. He's a liar. Have a look at this. Because there's no trust there. And uh, <clears throat> there's no trust there because from day one, they've been misled. Um... Uh, I wasn't one of the people who texted uh, Alan Pardew, but I would have said the same thing to him, having worked with these people. I'm talking about Mike Ashley and Derek Lambias. Uh, you can't work with these people, you, you, you know. Why? Because you can't trust them. They tell you one thing, they mean another. That You try and sign a player, you have a, 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 I had a phone call for about an hour to buy a player. After I went off the phone, they had another conference call together and said, right, we don't offer two million, we offer a million, they'll reject it, and that's it. This all came out in my court case, but it's the owners and, and the people running the club who have lost the trust of the fans, and they've lost it over a period of three and a half years. It's not just one thing, it's one thing after another. If Mike actually said, it's my club, I'll run it my way, what would your response to him be? Well, I think he has run it his way. Uh, but see, Mike Ashley doesn't know anything about football. People running the football club who know nothing. So what do you have to do? You have to get in people who know what they're doing, who you trust with the job and say to them, get on with it. But they don't even do that. And Kevin Keegan sued, sued Newcastle United and got over £2 million, and rightly so. You know, he was, had players bought underneath him. So he walked, and rightly so I would, if I was a manager, and he hadn't players bought for you. Now, there's several things that Mike Ashley, and there's probably some that I've missed off here. He's, you, you talk about the things that he's done in the club which are wrong, and there's absolutely loads, and I'm sure some of these will come up in the comments box below of ex things I've missed off. So, first of all, the stadium name was an absolute fucking joke. It's been called St. James's Park for under 105 years, six years, whatever it was, and then he goes and changed it to the Sports Direct, and then he changes it to the Sports Direct at St. James's Park to try and please with, and then one got coming, which is a joke of a sponsorship as well, came in and they say that they changed the stadium name. It wasn't. It was a PR stunt. And then you've got the things like the controversial sponsors, buying players behind Keegan's back, which I've touched upon, the lack of money being spent season after season after season. Credit where credit due. He spent 80 million. Fair enough. One McLaren here. But it wasn't even McLaren who was buying the players. It was the board. And then Joe Kinnear. Not just once. We had him twice. The banning of the local media to stop going to games. This goes on. People running the, running the club, like Kevin Keegan just said, who haven't got a foggiest idea of what football is or how to run a football business. And then you've got the carry-on with Jonas Gutierrez, the despicable, absolutely atrocious behaviour that the, that the board and the club threatened him. He was, he was a victim of cancer, for fuck's sake. He could have died. And the way that the club got on about that, it's an absolute joke. Ryan Taylor was told and Jonas Gutierrez were told over a telephone call that they're not being kept on in Newcastle. And then the Shea Given, now, the club come out and said that Shea Given forced to move from the club. Shea Given later on said, no, it wasn't. I didn't want to leave the club. And it's just, it's two relegations since Mike Ashley's been here. The second of Chris Hutton when we came up was unfair. There were several more. No wonder Mike Ashley is absolutely petrified to come to St. James's Park. Because he knows me, you, and everybody else who's at the ground will have a go at him. What can we do? That's the next step. We've got to target this. We really have. I've seen a few banners, and rightly so. Keep that going. We need to see more. You know, there is talk about getting these uh, rivals, DW and Sports Finest and all that, holding banners up for them. We've got to come up with more and more ideas. And it's interesting, hashtag, if Rafa goes, we go, what ideas they have. If you want any of that publicised, we're more than happy to publicise that in a video. We need a day summer. We've got to get him out of the club. Because if we lose Rafa Benitez... We're going down. I'm seriously, seriously worried if Rafa Benitez doesn't stay on next year and we could be a Sunderland. 
And look, we can all laugh at Sunderland, but realistically, that could be us in three, four year time. See us, bye.